Welcome to my first official garden update for this season. It is I, the miscellaneous mustache. Mag magnificent, mighty, you know who I am. So, well, if you don't know who I am, welcome to my channel. Hopefully you give me a like and subscribe. We're about to take a tour of my garden. It is an absolute mess. And I just want to show you what's going on. And I want to give you a few pointers on what soil to choose, what you should be feeding your plants. And at the end of this, I'm going to be potting up a giant plant. It is my three-year-old Carolina Reaper. And I'll show you right now. Let's take a walk over there. Okay, guys. First up, new addition. This is three boot jalokias or butt jalokias or red ghost, whatever you want to call them. I have three of them in here. I've been power feeding them and they're getting pretty big. I've got a big pot, getting pretty large, lemon tree. This is my second year. Uh, there's two plants in here. I planted two seeds. I got two different plants. One is a death spiral and the other one right here is a dougala. So I've got two plants in here. This is my second year orange bleeder. You can actually see the purple veins and purple leaves right there. And then this guy, whoop, at the end of the season, I uh, moved them indoors. This is my three year Carolina Reaper. And I wanna go from this pot to this pot. So at the end of the little tour, I'm going to show you how I'm going to pot up this monster plant, how to safely do it. And uh, hopefully we will get a gigantic Carolina Reaper plant by the end of the season. So a couple other things. I have my Thai dragon. Got a couple little overwinters there. If you follow my channel, you know about my super habanero. This produces extremely hot habanero peppers. It's my own cross. And this plant is three years old. Is in a giant, uh, gigantic pot here. I think it's like 60 liters, 55 liters. It is big. And this plant I expect to get humongous this year on its third season. Last year, this produced over 3,000 peppers. Yes, not 300, 3,000 bushel after bushel after bushel. And it's already getting ready to flower. Can't really show you, but there is flowers in there. And as well, we have this going on. That's my secret super pepper right there nobody knows about. I believe this is my ghost plant. I believe this is my Maruga scorpion plant, apocalypse scorpion, chocolate bubblegum, bunch of other guys here. Seven pot yellow brain strain over winter. These are all second years. Second year plants, third year, third year, third year, third year third year. Let's go see what else I got going on in the deck right now that I'm hardening off. More plants. <laughs> I have a lot more plants up here. The majority of them are chocolate or Douglas and chocolate prima tallies. So I'll be making a lot of crazy sauces with these. These are actually my second wave of plants. They're a lot smaller. I planted these slightly later than the ones in February. And uh, right here is a special plant that is a cross, I believe, between a Tabasco and a ghost. And I call it Tabasco. Slightly larger pods than a Tabasco, way hotter pods than a Tabasco. Let's see how that plays out this year. So let's go check out my tent. All right, more peppers. All right, so these were all planted at the end of February. And as you can see, they are getting quite large. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Chinese, uh, Chinense pepper plants uh, typically have way larger leaves. This is a seven pot Slimer. That is a Peach Reaper. More plants over here. <laughs> Getting very, very big, guys. We got a Bootla X, Seven Pot Primo, 
got seven pod infinity you notice down here there was a bit of a malnutrition issue up earlier on but i've got it under control everything else is looking nice and healthy up here those leaves will fall off and be replaced not concerned about that looking beautiful look at the size of this guy what is that that is a yellow brain strain i'm sure to get a lot of peppers out of that um speaking of peppers i've already got some coming in a couple right there there's some right here on this gigantic orange bleeder plant one of my favorite plants that i grow oh more peppers seven pot yellows seven pot yellows I don't expect too much as far as peppers. It is still early in the season, but they are growing. Let me see if I can locate my Dougla. I wanted to show you guys that. Where are you, Dougla? Oh yeah. Uh, one of these has one, uh, one giant pepper. If I can find it. I'm growing this actually for someone to eat. Dang, where is it? Uh, well, this one's actually got a couple, apparently. And then this one right here has a pretty massive one. So once this ripens, I'm actually going to be sending this to a guy named Brandon. He's a member of the pod people. And hopefully we can catch him eating this live. And then maybe he can send me a recording of the video and then you guys can watch it as well. Um, that's probably going to knock his socks off. He seems to know what he's doing. But... I think that will uh, teach them a lesson. And we got more plants, guys. Chocolate bubblegum, peppers coming in on there. We've got some two Carolina Reapers in that pot. Giant plant, this is a jigsaw. I've got all these that need to be potted up right now. I'll be doing that after I pause the video. And then over here, this is my sad corner. Um, a lot of these plants, you can see a little bit of yellowing. They were holding on to water. They weren't as advanced in the root system as the larger plants. You can see how much greener they are. But there's a point I want to make about this. I'm actually going to show you one of the pots that I have over there. I think I know what the culprit is. Crappy potting soil. I found some on sale. I said, let me give it a shot. And I'm going to explain why I don't like it and why it might have caused some of the issues here. So let's go take a look at those and uh, I'll tell you what I think. So before I show you what I think is causing the issue, I want to show you what like good potting soil looks like. Nice and soft, flaky. I believe this was like a miracle grow. Good root growth, bottomed out, no issues there. Everything looks great. Look at all the side roots that we have, these external roots that were hugging the pot, right? That's good potting soil. Let me show you what happened to all the plants that I used the crappy potting soil on. So now we're looking at the other soil, which is not soft. It's not fluffy, it's crunchy. It comes off in chunks, very dense, compacted. And you'll notice the shortage of all the roots on the sides. It's actually prevented it from fully growing out like the other plants. And I've noticed this on every plant that I've had in this soil. And we do have some bottom roots, but every plant that I've had in this soil has been not draining properly, uh, the roots have not been expanding properly. They're holding on to water because they have not filled the, like, the pot with all the roots. Typically when you have roots through the entire pot, it will drain better, it's taking much longer. So that is the issue I'm noticing. I'm gonna look for that bag and put it up on the screen right now and uh, tell you to stay away from that. If you're gonna use bagged potting soil, <laughs> Miracle-Gro is not a sponsor of me by any means. They have no idea who I am. But when you're just gonna use a bagged potting mix, go with miracle Grow. You can do this, or if you're balling and you got plenty of bucks to spend, go with the black bag. That stuff is just steroids for plants. Um, you can also mix up your own. I did that last year. This year I'm just in a pinch. So what I'm doing is using this and I'll be and I'm using a I'm hand feeding with watering cans using my uh, own solution that I have here. I did not make it. Sorry, not my own, but I'm using Floranova Grow to start off the season, which is 7410 MPK. Uh, really good stuff. I've had no problems with it. 
I'll be using this until about mid mid to the end of this month and then I'll be switching off to the Bloom version of this. Uh, really good product. Also, not a sponsor and also really brown and messy. But anyway, that's what I think is going on. And all of the plants that were planted in the miracle Grow, good potting soil, beautiful, big, bushy, happy, not yellow. Everything's looking great. Everything that was planted in the crappy soil, small, yellow, not happy. This one was in regular, not happy, not happy, not happy, all planted in that crap. I mean, you can even see there is water issues here. Cupping in the leaves. It's holding on to water, yellowing, not good. So, is it the end of the world? No, I've planted them all in miracle Grow now. And that should, once they spread out their roots and get into that stuff, uh, bring them back to normal. I actually rinsed off as much of this crap as I could and then put them all in the fresh potting mix. So a lot healthier. So I'm gonna finish up potting here and we're gonna go, well, you'll be going right to me potting up the gigantic plant. So let's get to that. I'm gonna finish this and I'll see you in the future. All right, so the first thing I wanna do when transplanting up a giant reaper plant which will get massive this season for sure. It was cut back a lot. This thing was much taller, much wider, uh, but I always cut them back. And uh, first thing you wanna do is soak the soil before any transplant. Uh, it just helps the um, original soil stay moist. And once you add the new soil, it kind of prevents it from leaching all the moisture out of the soil in the original pot. So we're really gonna soak this good. Let that do its thing. And then we have soil for the bottom of the pot, which I'll be measuring out the depth. I'll be placing that in, seeing how far the pot is up above. So basically I'll fill up the pot, place the plant, see how high up it is. I'll know that's the depth I want. And then I've got more soil for the top. Now, when I was speaking about the soil, what I meant was, it doesn't have to be miracle grow, guys. It doesn't have to be anything special, but what it has to be is fluffy. You want good, fluffy soil. So when you go to select your soil, whether you're going to the big box store or the mom and pop shop, uh, feel the bag. The bag feels like it's nice and soft and there's a good consistency to it it's probably a good potting mix you know as long as it has perlite and everything else in it if it feels like a bag of sticks very tough very dense very hard um, i'd probably steer clear of that just because of what happened with my experience this year um, like saying last year i did make my own potting mix it was my own mixture i got topsoil and a bunch of other things and mixed it together um, and slow fed it uh, but I prefer, I prefer to manually feed my plants. That's what I've learned after last year, uh, between last year and the previous year. I like to manually control and feed my plants when I want to. So I put them into a basic potting soil and then I will feed them once every three days. And I will feed them just about half or a little bit under full strength. That's all they need. And it just makes them grow pretty fast. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's get set up here and I'll show you how to transplant a monster Carolina Reaper plant from one pot to a much larger pot. All right, so like I said, the first thing I want to do is start by filling the bottom of the pot so I can get a baseline when I set that pot inside this pot to see if I'm at the correct level. So I'm going to take my soil here, kind of gauge it. See where that takes us. That looks close. Let's just take this pot right here and set it in the pot. And we can see we're a little bit over. So that will take some out. And you can actually see the outline from the bottom of the pot here. So I will scoop some of that out. place this back in and now 
we're up a little bit, but you can see there's over here, we have some space. So that should sink in and we should just be perfectly flush here. So I'm just gonna move just a teeny more like that. And then we need to get this guy out of here. So best way to do that, and I've shown this with my super habanero in a video a while ago, if you wanna see that one, that was pretty massive, uh, is to just lay it on its side, like so, and to support the plant, and then use your knee to loosen. You'll start to see it separate. like so, and then slightly tip the plant. And work it out. Gotta get a grip here. Probably a two person job. And as you can see, oh, there's our stick. All the roots down here. I wanna give this some fresh soil. These are old roots. It's actually not as full as I thought it'd be. But I wanna give it some more room. So what I'm gonna do is add this to the pot. And hopefully it'll fill up all this this year. There we go. And what I can do now is actually add more support sticks to the plant to help it uh, support it doing storing storms or whatever. So but right now I just want to fill in the gaps here. with what I've got here. I don't want to compress it too much. I just want to give enough force so that I'm getting the soil down along the sides. You don't want any voids underneath. And we'll add more for the potting mix. going to throw it on top and then we'll work it into the sides. You don't want to go too high over the original potting, um, the original clump of soil from the original pot. You can go a little bit over like a top soil. Now actually wash some nutrition down into the lower soil, in the old soil. But this will give our three-year-old reaper a chance to push out some more roots. And I'll actually be feeding him every three days manually with the uh, liquid feed that I showed you earlier. Let's try to stimulate that root growth as well as the foliage up top. So that's looking nice and good. Now I just gotta give it a thorough cirque, a cirque, thorough soak. Also, when you're using a hose outside, guys, make sure you test the uh, temperature right now because this is boiling my hand. That's how hot it is. Don't just go ahead and spray the plant. Once it feels cold, then go ahead. Sometimes there's a little bit of hot water after you think there's no more. I really like to soak it good because the perlite will 
absorb a lot of the water, which is good because you want the perlite to redistribute that after the soil starts to dry. But I want to make sure that it's absolutely soaked through and through. That way it's not drawing moisture away from the original potting mix that we had in the original pot and pulling it away from the plant. So that should be good. I'm gonna let that drain out. And uh, shouldn't take long for this to dry out again because it's gonna be 95 today and 94 tomorrow and 85 plus for the rest of the week. So we're in it guys, this is, the, this is it. This is the time of year. Pretty soon it'll be watering every day. All right. So we'll go check on see what I did with the rest of the plants and then uh, we'll have a little talk at the end of the video. Two weeks later. Guys, life's been busy for me and uh, two weeks have gone by since we were in the tent looking at my plants. If you have to go back and rewind the video to the beginning to see what things look like, um, here we are. <laughs> In only two weeks time, a lot has happened. Um, I got busy. I didn't have the time to finish everything up. I've actually moved those plants out that I was gonna pot up. And uh, I switched over to Bloom Food. And I don't know if you can see, there's like a bajillion flowers starting to come in. I, I wanted them to, A, you're gonna be like, why do you let your plants grow so tall? Well, because I can't let them bush out in here. If they bush out in here, I won't be able to get through here. So I like to let them grow taller. Uh, I let them bush out more out there, but in here I need them tall. So I let them grow tall. And then I, once I think that they're the proper height, I switch them over to a bloom feed and then we get a million flowers just coming in. Everything's starting to get ready to go. And we're even getting peppers already. I mean, I've got seven pot infinities coming in there. I've got more coming in over here. I've got a freaking thousand Maruga X Douglas coming in here. All under there, look at that. I've got some ripe ones, more coming in. I got seven pot yellows. Guys, it's, it's getting crazy in here. It's only been a couple of weeks since I showed that video. Showed you, geez, since you watched the beginning of the video is what I meant to say. And yeah, it's going bananas. That pepper I showed at the beginning, I already shipped it out. Got another Dougaloo there. It's gonna, it's gonna start popping off. I had to sweet the, switch the feeding regimen. And that's what I did. And uh, man, look at that death spiral. I've got more of those coming in, but guys, things are just popping off. It's amazing what can happen in only a couple of weeks, especially when you're feeding your plants properly. And I did follow the regimen twice a week, or at least every three days. And um, basically switched off to the bloom food but yeah you have to scroll back to the beginning of the video to see oh my god oh my god look at all these ghosts this thing is just exploding guys exploding there's more over here these are these are starting to come in now on the three plants guys it's a freaking jungle bootla x Everything's getting ready to come in. You want to see something crazy? Grow tie dragons. Holy cow. Look at that. This is what it's all about, guys. I'm starting to get excited. I know it's still early. Things can always go wrong. But you just got to go with the flow, man. Got to keep it bumping, man. Super habanero is coming in. I told you at the beginning of the video, I had 3,000 pods. Well, that was last season. Let's see what we can get this year. Orange bleeder, looking beautiful. Purple pods coming in, man, and then they turn orange bleeder. Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my God. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Everything's looking amazing. Let's go check the ones out on the deck. Guys. Guys, oh my God. These were the little ones that were up here in smaller pots. They've all been potted up. They're already taken off. Look at this Tabasco. It's like four feet tall. This is basically my June and early July garden update, guys. I've even got blackberries. I've got rosemaries. I've got mint. Oh yeah. Mmm, smelling good. Oh God. Thank you so much guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Reaper is starting to take off here, guys. Had to wait for those roots to settle. I'm feeding him. He's adapting, he's getting better, he's feeling good. He's feeling good, I need to mow the lawn. I've got peppers coming in everywhere, guys. Oh my God. Ah. Lemon tree's looking happy too. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, before I go, those yellow plants that I was gonna pot up, I never potted up and look, they're still yellow. Do not buy this garbage. Again, I posted that picture. Do not buy this crap. It's awful. You're going to regret it. Your plants are going to look like crap. Crap. Get the good stuff. Get the good stuff. Nice, beautiful, good stuff. Healthier plants. Look at the size of that freaking habanero. Oh my God. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out my mid-July update because since I started power feeding them now with the bloom food, things are gonna pop off. I guarantee it. We're gonna have a lot of peppers coming. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram. I will be doing hot boxes on there where I will send out fresh pods I'll be doing a giveaway at 1,000 followers on Instagram, and I'll be selling them to a limited supply of people. And it's gonna be awesome. And I'm gonna have lots of cool peppers. So guys, guys, let's get out of here. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Have a great night. Whatever time it is, have a great one.